this here is a vintage Shabadin, I think it is how it's pronounced. SV510 videotape recorder. Not just any videotape recorder. A vintage reel to reel videotape recorder. This is half inch diameter tape. This is a seven inch reel. Lasts about an hour depending on the speed. Slow to normal over here. Fix it to that, then you can use it with the top geometer. That just runs it at normal. Record, audio only, power, manual, AGC, audio level. That's the tape drum. Basically threads here and through this and that. This needs cleaning because it's got some white crusty crap on it. So let's take that apart and clean it. These, these were foam pads originally that kept the reels in place. They disintegrated. So this thing's fully dusty with all that crap. I don't know if it works. I don't have a power cord. I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace the uh, jack in the back with these IEC connectors. So it'll take a standard computer cord. Tape counter. So, drag it around the back. You got the controls here for it. Uses UHF type connectors, which I have. I got UHF to RF adapters, so it'll work with standard coax cables. Audio in, audio out. That you can't really get a cable for too much, and there's no TV today that takes that type of cable. Tracking camera, video in, video out. That. 117 volts. I assume it's NTSC. Here's your switch, stop, play, pause, fast forward. That works. That seems like it's dragging in place, so if I lubrication issue with the brake on that. That releases it. So that's like a brake, so when the tape is threaded, that releases it. So that actually brake to stop it from freewheeling. This is the recording and playback head. Your audio and record heads. That be that black thing would be your erase head. These are your record and playback heads. Capstan, pinch roller. That shows you how to thread it. Before I even attempt to power this up, I'm gonna blow it out with air. Then I'm gonna take it apart and check the conditions of the uh, rubber reels and any belts that it needs. This has to get cleaned because it's got some like hard crusty stuff on it. The rubber itself is fine, but it's got like paint or something on it, so I don't know about that. But let's see what I can do about cleaning it. Then we'll take a look at the inside. Here's the inside of it, just like your standard reel to reel tape recorder. Got your idler wheels. Everything appears fine and solid. This is your drive motor, main one. This is the capstan. I think it's motor driven, or it might have a belt. Have to take it apart and look. You can see the flywheel right there underneath the spring that turns with the capstan. Everything appears to be intact. A lot of capacitors and circuit boards underneath here. Dusty. I'll clean everything with isopropyl alcohol. Well, let's see if I can take the back off, see if there's any belts I need to replace. This belt here I don't care about, it's just for the tape counter. I mean, it's a little bit bent, like right there where it's rusted, but 
other than that, don't really care. I'll clean it too. That just drives the tape counter, so no big deal. So let's see if I can take this apart further and see if there's any other belts I need to worry about. Otherwise I'll see about maybe replacing that plug if I can. The drum, the tape heads, I'll clean those with alcohol. You can see the path it takes. The tape comes because this side's higher than that. That's why it's called a helical scan. Because it scans at an angle, the whole width of the tape. So it starts here, then goes up or down, depending on how you look at it. You kind of just, that little slit is for the tape heads. Now the heads are damaged, they are pretty much SOL, unobtaining them. But, we'll find out if this thing works or not. So let's take it apart some more. Okay, here's the underside of it, out of its casing. You got the motor that drives the idle reels. You got the motor that drives the tape heads. That's the uh, pinch roller there and capstan reel. But there's no belt, and I don't see any evidence of one either that, that disintegrated. I can't see it wrapping around there, because there's metal bars in the way. Unless, it dri unless it's driven off the tape head motor. But there's stuff in the way. So maybe it doesn't use a uh, belt. Maybe the uh, pinch roller. I can't see the pinch roller being uh, driven by a motor. Maybe it just turns by friction, I guess. I'm not sure. But if you think there was, if there was a belt, it would have turned to goo. There's no evidence of any goo in here, so maybe it doesn't use a belt. I don't know. Some stupid foam pads got into everything, as you can see. I've been using those, can dusters. So I'll spray it down with contact cleaner, all the switches and stuff. Let it dry. And then I guess I'll give them, maybe give the motor some oil, if possible. But it looks like they're permanently sealed, though, so there's really no way to oil, oil them. That one I probably can. And I guess I'll try running it without a tape, and hopefully it don't blow up. All the capacitors looked in look intact. A lot of shit in here, man. A lot of crap. Well, I'll spray everything with contact cleaner, and cross our fingers, this thing will run. Okay, so I cleaned everything. I don't know where the belt would go for this. I don't... For this thing here, this capstan. Doesn't appear to be a direct drive, so I don't know if it just runs the run or how it runs. I don't know where the belt would go, and I don't see any remnants of one. Clean the tape pass. I'm not going to run it with the tape yet. Clean these with alcohol. Everything's been cleaned. Cleaned it the best I could with all this stupid powder shit. Got a cord rigged up for now. We'll plug it in there. Hope I don't blow a fuse. Safety third. Let's see if this thing even runs at all. Well, I got it somewhat wedged in there the best I can. Nothing's blown up yet. Wires aren't touching. That was if I pressed this on. Now I got power. I see a light. That's running. Those always ran non-stop. Alright. Play. Yeah, capstan ain't turning. So that has to be driven by a belt, but I don't know where. It sounds like the heads are spinning. Yeah, the heads are rotating. I can feel the capstan under there.
but this ain't rotating with the motor. There it goes for a second. Then it stalls. And it starts to run and dies. So it probably needs a run capacitor maybe. It doesn't have enough strength to turn it. So right now it's running on its own. But like I said, it's not still engaged. It starts rotating, then it stalls. So I'm probably gonna replace the run capacitor maybe. Captain's not rotating at all. So I'll say it's belt driven, but I don't know where the belt goes. I do not know. So, still got some work to do on this thing. But it didn't blow up. So I'll see before I can get it to play a tape, I gotta figure out why it is stalling. Watch the reel. Stalls out the motor. The motor doesn't have enough torque. Yeah, it's hard for me to stall it by hand, but yeah, it stalls out on that. Well, still got work to do. Kill the main power. So. Back to the drawing board. Okay, I'm stupid. I figured out why the reels stop. This, I forgot. This is the tape sensor, so I gotta push it in to simulate that there's a tape. Push it in far enough, now okay, now it's gonna run. Let go, it drops down enough, triggers the switch, it thinks there's no tape. It shuts the reels off, but it doesn't shut the heads off. Push that in, okay, now, we'll, now it runs. Duh. Forgot about that. So that's solved. Now you gotta figure out how to get this stupid capstan to run. Where does the damn belt go? I'd like to know. Because it's not direct drive. And I can't see where the belt would go because it's stuff in the way. Unless it requires a tape to run, I don't know. But I think that would put too much drag on it. So, I need to look up some videos or something and figure out where the belt goes on this. If it takes a belt, I don't know. That's one problem solved. So, that's that one. Now the head's come to a stop. It's been to several thousand RPMs. Kill the main power. Watch this come to a stop. So, the more updates once I get the capstan running, then I can try it with tape. Okay, update on the belt situation. Holding this rope here. If you don't know the size of the belt, this is a trick you do. I guess it does wrap around the pulley on the, behind this motor. That's the capstan pulley. So you take a piece of string, wrap it around then, wrap it around both the pulleys, then you measure them. I'm going to try and get a flat belt first. I'll order a couple, a flat belt, order a square belt, and I'll try a round belt. One of them should hopefully stay on this and make this thing work. Everything else on here apparently runs, just got to get a capstan belt. Because there's no information on this manufacturer, I can't exactly look up parts for it. So I'm going to have to get a, order a custom belt. So once I get that, I will put it on here and if everything checks out, I can try putting a tape on here and see if it will record at all. I sprayed the heck out of the recording switch 
which is right down there. Similar to what A track players use. I sprayed contact cleaner in there, sprayed it back and forth, worked it back and forth, sprayed everything I could with contact cleaner. Hopefully it's enough. That foam shit went everywhere. We'll see if I'll even record at all. If it even if the heads are any good, I don't know. I won't know nothing until I get this damn belt and can put a tape on here and try to record and play back. So it'll be an update to follow once I get the uh, belt.